Less than an hour ago, we heard from the police who have identified the man thought to be the origami killer. Ethan Mars, father of the kidnapped victim Sean Mars, is on the run and should be considered armed and dangerous. A police manhunt is now underway, and they hope that they will soon be able to announce the apprehension of this dangerous lunatic. I brought some food. I didn't know what you liked, so I brought some of everything. I, I hope that's okay. Any cops? No, I uh, think we lost them. The guy at the desk, though, he gives me the creeps. I don't trust him. You're all over the news reports, Ethan. Every cop in the country will be hunting you. They say you're the origami killer. Is it true? Are you the killer, Ethan? Please, Madison, don't ask any more questions. The less you know... That's for me to decide. What have they got on you, Ethan? What have you done? I... I sometimes have these blackouts. Times where I don't know what I'm doing. As if I'm... someone completely different. The only thing I remember afterwards... is the bodies. He's in the water. Why are you hurt, Ethan? Why were you in that apartment? I think my other self is testing, testing my love for Sean. He wants to know if I would love my son enough to save him. That means there's some part of me that knows where Sean is. But the only way to find him is to go through these trials. Why can't you tell that to the police? And tell them what? That I'm a schizophrenic who drowns his victims and has kidnapped his own son? They'd never let me go, and I have to stay free to save Sean. I have no choice. I'm his only chance. When Sean is out of danger, I'll turn myself in, but not until then. You can't keep going like this. You're destroying yourself, Ethan. Finding Sean is the only thing that matters. There has to be another way. You don't understand. Time is running out. Sean will be dead in a few hours. I have no choice! Please, Madison. Leave. Forget everything that's happened. There is nothing more you can do for me. If you want to help me, leave. Leave me to do this on my own.
Manfred! Manfred! Fred! Anybody home? Hi there, Manfred. Who is it? Scott. Scott Shelby. Do you remember me? Scott? Oh, about ten years, I guess. Oh. At my age, time means nothing anymore. I, I repair clocks, but I try to forget about time. How about you? Are you still with the police? Oh, no, I quit. I'm a private investigator now. Uh, this is Lauren. She's a, she's a friend. Hello. Oh, hello, young lady. Well, this, this calls for a celebration. I'm just a thing. Wait there. I, I'm sure I, I saw a, a bottle of scotch around here somewhere. Do an old man a favor, would you, Scott? Tell him to call back this afternoon. Sure, no problem. Hello? Yeah, this is Manfred's. He's not available right now. Could you call back later this afternoon? Thanks. Well... To old friends. <sighs> Do you like it? Yes, it's beautiful. It's a Stradelli, crafted in Venice in the 18th century. Mm. It's one of my favorite pieces. Tell me, Scott, what brings you back after all these years? I'd like you to have a look at an envelope. I thought maybe you could tell me about the typewriter that was used to type the address on it. Oh. Well, let's have a look. Now, could you pass me the uh, magnifying glass from behind the counter, oh, Sure, please? I'll get it. My eyes are beginning to fail me. Thanks. Well, let's see what this envelope has to say for itself. The Royal Five. And yes, the shape of the T's and the F's is typical of that model. Produced between 1907 and 1924. Yes. No doubt about it. It's a Royal Five. These typewriters, are they rare? No, no, they're fairly common. I'd say many folks have one gathering dust in an attic or in their cellar. Are there many places around that could prepare one of these? I bought the company's entire stock of spare parts for a song in 64. Uh, well, they were going to take them to the dumpster, so I got the lot. <laughs> well, anybody around here who has one that actually works has been to see me at one time or another. Do you keep a record of all your clients? Oh, yes, indeed. Well, at least the ones who pay. <laughs> Any chance I could get a peek at that? Well, yes, of course. I keep my account books in the office. Uh, 
If you're not in a hurry, I have a list of all the clients who never bought a Royal Five or, or had one repaired. Yeah, that would really help us out. Hmm. Delighted to help. Give me two minutes, and I'll be right back with the list. You think the killer's been here? If he has a 1920s typewriter, he may have needed Manfred's services to get it fixed. We'll know when we get the list. Hello? Your call is locked, sir. A police car will be there in a few minutes. I need to know who you are, sir. Sir? Hello? Oh my god! He's dead. Oh. has already called the police. I think he wants us to be a scapegoats. We gotta get the hell out of here. What do you mean? We have nothing to do with his death. We were just here when it happened. Look, we're running out of time to find Sean Mars. The last thing we need is 24 hours in a police station explaining this whole thing. Well, so what do we do? They're gonna be here any minute. Almost finished. You get all the prints? I got what I got. It should be enough to prevent them from fighting us. Come on, let's go. Where are we going? 
taking you home. This is getting way too dangerous. No way. We were partners, remember? We had a deal. Listen, Lauren, I know you want to find the killer, but you're not helping me by putting yourself in danger. I'm not a child. I know what I have to do. I've got to find my son's killer. You're not going to stop me. Your son is dead! I have no choice. I guess I'm doing this to protect her. Such an idiot. I better catch up with her. I can't just leave her like that. She'd do anything to find the guy who killed her son. This girl's stubborn as a mule. She doesn't let up, with or without me. It's all my fault. I should never have let her come with me. Lauren! Miss Pitty. Miss him so much. do anything to hold him once again in my arms. I said a thousand times that I don't want any junkies at my door. If you want to score, man, you gotta fucking call first. Come on. Beat it. Fuck! Are you deaf or what? I said get out of here! You're gonna cause me trouble, and I'd... Hey! Take it easy, man, huh? Keep cool. <laughs> what do you want? Dope? Money? Tell me what you need. God! I'm gonna blow your brains out, you son of a bitch! You think you're coming to my house and steal my dope? You're gonna be shooting up in your ass, motherfucker!
Matt, it's Sam. I got your information. And the owner of the apartment in Marble Street is a Dr. Adrian Baker. He's a struck-off surgeon. He used to sell drugs to junkies on the quad. He made some cash and bought up some cheap-ass apartments, including the one in Marble Street. Of course, he got caught. He did. Hey, Matt, be careful, okay? I'm on it. Talk to you later. The owner of the apartment where Ethan cut off his finger lives here. It's not much of a lead, but it's all I've got. Hi. Uh, I was told that you could get Vitropin. Without a prescription. Sorry, you were misinformed. Goodbye. Hold on. I, I, I really need your help here. I can pay. Well, why didn't you say so? Please, come in. So, you're looking for Betropid, my dear? Are oh, you having trouble sleeping? How much do you need? I don't know, um, about three, four boxes. Well, no, that shouldn't be a problem. Would you like a drink? I was just about to have one. No, thanks. Well, alcohol helps take the edge off the pills, don't you think? Anyway, we should drink a toast to our first deal. I haven't seen you around here before. Who told you about me? I met a guy at a party. He popped some betropin. Told me he got it from you. Can you get other types of medicine? Everything has a price, my dear. What about you? Do you have a price? Forget it. I'm not for sale. I heard you had some apartments for rent. I'm looking. Sorry, darling. Those are all booked up. Shame. I was looking for something around... Marble Street? Having some trouble? Didn't your mother ever warn you about accepting gifts from strangers? <laughs> to Matthew. He claimed he had come to the census. Another one of those goddamn government spies. So, you're interested in my Marble Street apartment. I read it to my friend Paco, if you must know. I have no idea what he does there. Maybe that's where he fornicates with his dancers from the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> To be honest, I don't give a damn. Just as long as he pays his rent, he can do whatever he likes. But enough with the chit-chat. Have you ever noticed, as soon as you start to do a little housework, someone always comes calling? I'll get rid of our visitor and be right back. Lord has 
decided to make a special effort with you, brother. He wants me to let you have this magnificent volume for only three dollars. All right. You convinced me. You step inside. Give me a moment, and I'll get you a three dollars. Sorry about that. My next appointment has arrived a little early. But don't worry, we have just enough time to finish you off. Don't be afraid. We'll make our last moments together excruciatingly memorable. <laughs> Tom and Jaden, FBI. Can we talk for a minute? I'm listening. Can we go inside? I'm looking for the owner of a blue Chevrolet Malibu 83. I don't give a damn how the car got here, or whether you stole it or not. I just want to know who bought it from me. Sorry, man. Don't ring a bell. I got a real bad memory for me. Perhaps I can help you to remember. If we find out that you sold the car to the man we're looking for, you're looking at some pretty solid time inside, Jackie boy. You trying to scam me with your big talk? I never saw your damn car. Now take a walk. Blood. Now why is there blood here? Same brand of tire as the car I'm looking for. Has the killer's car been here? A few traces of blue paint, same tire tracks. No doubt about it, the killer's car was here.
one of your cop buddies asking too many questions. I had to solder up his little mouth. Hands on your head, pig. I ain't got time to be playing around with you. Let's just get you out of sight and finish you off. No dice, Inspector Asshole! Don't even think about it! Hey! No fucking around or I'll pop a cap in your ass right here! So, you think the origami killer killed Manfred? That makes sense. Didn't want him spilling his guts to us. And you suspect Gordy Kramer, right? Oh, him or one of his men. Gordy has the time and the means, not to mention the fucked up attitude to go along with it. He's only a suspect, but he's a pretty guilty looking one. Are these your files on the case? Yeah, I've been working on them for a couple of years. Uh, I built up a mountain of paperwork. Magazines about origami? You think the killer could have subscribed to one of those? If he was even remotely interested in origami in the last 30 years, his name may be in there somewhere. The trouble is, there's over 500 names. I guess a squat. I'm starving. Do you have anything to eat? Well, I'm no chef, but I should be able to make some scrambled eggs if you like. Great. I'm soaking wet. I need to warm up a little. Guest, go to my bedroom. It's the next door. Oh, I'll cook up the eggs while you're under the shower. I should prep those scrambled eggs. I took the liberty of borrowing your bathrobe. Looks better on you. Hey, that almost looks good enough to eat. What's that? The notebook I took from Manfred's place. According to this, about 30 clients bought spare parts for Royal Machines in the last 10 years. The killer may be one of them. Oh, you know, checking out the alibi of 30 clients, one by one, that's a lot of legwork. Except that if we cross-check them with the list. The list of subscribers to Origami Magazines. You still got that, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. But Lauren, wait. If the killer really used a royal typewriter, and if he subscribed to an origami magazine, his name should be on both lists. Well, Lauren, I, I mean, that's just an assumption, but yeah, I suppose. His name is here somewhere. Help me.
The only guy whose name was on both lists died when he was 10. What are you gonna do now? Dig up his coffin, make sure he's dead? I know it doesn't make any sense. Unless the killer was only using his name. But why use the name of a kid who died 30 years ago? Well, that's what we came to find out. The name is John Shepard. It should be on a grave around here somewhere. You never give up, do you? Excuse me, I'm looking for... Her. Well, don't worry about it. The man is alone. Excuse me. I'm looking for the grave of a young boy who died about 30 years ago. His name was John Shepard. You wouldn't know where it is by any chance. The children's graves are in the next plot. Thanks. These flowers are fresh. Looks like someone's still tending the grave. Oh, youngin. That one I knew well. You knew John Shepard? I've worked this graveyard nearly all my life. I remember what happened. It was in 77, October. Drunk again. What are we gonna do? It's pouring rain. We're gonna get soaked if we spend a day outside. Well, this won't get beat. The rain never hurt nobody. Come on, let's go play. Bet you can't catch me! but a slow poke.
What you doing? You're coming or not? I can do it all right. Just watch. to 20 and try to find me, okay? One, two, three, four, five, seven, ten, thirteen, fourteen, seventeen, Christ, that's John's voice. Help! John! My foot. My foot is stuck. Grab on! I'll put it out there! <laughs> Oh, my God. 
we're going to do. Hang on, John. I'll, I'll get help. Just hang on. Go on, hurry. I think the water's rising. I'm hurrying. I'll be right back. But the poor kid never did find any help. And his brother drowned in a park full of rainwater. The boy that lived, what happened to him? Well, all I know is he got separated from his parents. I, I think he got adopted. Well, looks like a storm's coming. I guess I better be getting home. Christ, what a horrible story. Drowned in the rain while holding his brother's hand. Do you think he... he could be the origami killer? Come on, let's get back in the car. Wait! What's the matter? That man over there. Yeah? He's Charles Kramer. Gordy's father? What's he doing here? He's putting flowers on John Shepard's grave. 